Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spinning Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today I want to take a look, a closer look, at that picture of Eddie Brock that IGN released earlier today. And uh, thank you to Rudger Creations who commented on the video and he actually uh, helped me with a few of the words. So what I did was I kind of zoomed in on the journal of Eddie Brock's uh, fingers. And luckily I found a picture of it that was a better quality than the one that I could make uh, on my computer. So I'll put that here. Um, the original image and then we have like the close-up of his hand and I was trying to read what was in his journal I wanted to know what questions he was asking if he was asking questions I assumed if he had his journal out he was maybe doing an interview or at a press conference or something where a journalist would be and it turned out that was the case and there's a couple questions on here that we can I, the last one I have trouble with, but we're going to go through each uh, thing here um, and talk about them. And uh, th so thank you all for commenting and telling me you wanted me to make a video about this because I was already thinking about it. I was just having trouble zooming in on some of the pictures I had. I didn't have like really good high res ones, so I was having trouble with some of the words. Uh, but luckily, uh, some were posted today, and I think CBR like translated some of it too. But luckily, we already had the first two lines, but I did use CBR to help me with the last one. So thank you, CBR, for that. I'll put a link down below to these uh, sites and uh, definitely check out Rudger Creations. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel. He hasn't posted a video in a couple years though. I went and looked at it, uh, but uh, hopefully he'll come back, make some more stuff. So I'll put his link down below just in case he brings his series back. All right, so let's move on to the first one. The first one, uh, the first line there, Eddie Brock has written down says, so how exactly does the Life Foundation go about testing its pharmaceuticals? So we see here that Eddie Brock is digging. He's looking for a story. He believes there's a story here and he's uh, setting it up. You know, he's like, all right, here's the, here's my foot in the water. I'm going to see if they'll answer, um, you know, truthfully on how, cause I'm thinking at this point, he might already know how they find patients, how they, how they test their pharmaceuticals. I'm assuming he knows at this point, uh, normally when you're a journalist and you're an investigative journalist, you typically will know answers to questions you ask and you're just trying to see if what they say lines up with what you already have and the information you've already confirmed um, so you're kind of a detective in a way sometimes uh, sometimes you do just add, ask questions to see if it leads you down a path of answers but I'm feel I have a feeling that this is very intentional for Eddie uh, so that's the first question he's asking he's asking life foundation so uh, also what this might tell us is that remember what I said is how can you tell a, a venom story without Spider-Man. And for, for when they first announced this, that's what I thought. I said, there's no way you can do one without Spider-Man. But really, when you look at Eddie, all you need is you need someone to ruin his life. And if someone, any, it could be anybody. Yes, it's Spider-Man in the comics, but if you're just trying to tell the, the arc of Eddie Brock, you really just need someone to ruin his life. And in this case, it may actually be the Life Foundation. It may be people with power, with influence, who ruin his life, who take away his credibility. Um, obviously, nowadays online, it's really easy to do that. You could slander anyone online now. You can make accusations. Um, you could do any, there's a million ways you can you know, ruin a career nowadays. And going back to my earlier episodes, I, I always thought, yes, if you wanna make Eddie Brock relevant to today, don't make him just like a commando action star, you know, who's like in the military and he gets the symbiote. Um, m keep his origins true. Make him a journalist who maybe gets trashed online, you know, gets his job taken away from him, his life ruined. Uh, that to me is something that's happening in the world today. It, it, obviously, there's there's no debating that. And I just think to have a superhero movie or a monster movie or whatever tackle that and shine some light on that kind of controversy and, and make Eddie Brock kind of like a, you know, well, is he a good person? Is he not a good person? That's true to the character. Right? He's not black and white good, even though he's black and white physically with his costume. Uh, he is not just one or the other. He is the, in a lot of ways, a, like all of us, he makes mistakes and, uh, and he pays for those mistakes. And so in this one, maybe he had true intentions, much like he did in like the Spider-Man animated series where he was he was like, hey, Dr. Connors is, he's, he's the, the lizard and Spider-Man, you know, covered that up and made Eddie Brock look like a fraud. Um, and then in the comics, he was like, you know, after the Sin Eater, he's like, hey, there's a serial killer out there. I want to get to the root of this guy and maybe expose him and help people. And then he turns out he hitched his, you know, ride to the wrong star and he 
you know, he got the wrong guy. So it's a, he makes mistakes. That's what Eddie Brock is. He's human in that way. And I think by doing this, that's great. So showing him dig in for answers, that's a good sign for uh, for them sticking to his origin, but still giving him an enemy. Because I'm guessing if he digs too deep, the Life Foundation ruins his life, and then boom, you have the people he hates. So when he gets the symbiote, he has someone to go after. The next question he asks is, what about the allegations your empire is built on? So again, when you're a journalist, uh, especially investigative journalist, you don't you, you typically ask questions you know the answers to. So right now he's asking about the allegations of this company. I guess some information got out there. Somehow Eddie Brock got it. He dug it up somehow and is l learning about Life Foundation. And he knows that there's some shady practices going on here. Um, again, he could just be asking a, a random question. But in most cases, like I said, you'll know the answer before you ask. That's the goal of, you know, being a journalist um, and and seeing if people are on the level, if they'll be honest with you, if they'll be truthful, uh, because ultimately your goal is to get the truth out there. So, um, yeah, again, what about the allegations your empire is built on? That is leading us to learn a lot about the Life Foundation already in two questions, knowing that, okay, they're a big company, they're a big deal, um, they test pharmaceuticals, and now we're learning that there's allegations, there's people coming out, speaking out against them, um, and maybe they're in control of the media, maybe they have a way to be like, oh, what are you talking about? Those are just allegations, there's no proof of that, you know, and they find a way to silence people. It's, you know, Dangerous world Eddie Brock is living in. Dangerous world that investigative journalists live in, for sure. And the last thing, this is the one I had trouble with. So again, thanks CBR. And thank you, Rudger Creations, again, for helping me with those two. Because there were a couple uh, words I couldn't make out. And your comment helped me out a lot. Um, and then now CBR uh, helped me with this one, uh, where it says, uh, at the beginning, it's like a follow-up question to the allegation thing. Uh, that you recruit the most vulnerable of us to volunteer for the tests that, for the most part... This is something that was left out of the initial translation I saw, but it says, for the most part, uh, uh, that end up blank, blanking them. Uh, them. Um, we can't see that last word because his finger covers most of it, as you can see in the photo here. So it's hard to see that last word, but I'm going to try to fill in the blank and say that maybe it's that you recruit the most vulnerable of us to volunteer for the test that, for the most part, end up hurting them. Um, maybe hurting them is the last part. I can't tell, I can't tell if that's an H and a U. It, it looks, it's fuzzy to me. Um, but let me know if you know, if you have a better translation, let me know that in the comments. But again, uh, Eddie knowing before he even asked the first question that he was gonna end up here, that you recruit the most vulnerable. So there are people out there that either maybe the homeless, cause it's lethal protector. So maybe this Life Foundation is recruiting homeless people. Uh, suicidal people. Obviously, you know, suicide is a, a thing that recurs a lot in Venom storytelling. Um, a lot of people close to him, even the against the symbiotes and playing the symbiotes, there's a lot of suicide in that character that revolves around him. Um, even himself at one point tried to take his own life. So, um, yeah, it's just... I don't know. It, it, it tell, again tells us a lot that uh, the Life Foundation is finding people that m might not speak out against them because they're giving them an opportunity. Someone who's at the bottom of the barrel, uh, someone who needs help uh, psychologically, physically, financially. So yeah, again, just in three little questions. That's why pictures like this are worth investigating. When people say like, "Oh, it's you know, it's just a picture of Tom Hardy," it's like, "No, you're right. It's just a picture of Tom Hardy looking like Tom Hardy, which is fine." But there's information here. Nothing when you're working in marketing, when you're working in movie, uh, you know, promotion, you don't want anything to just be arbitrary. You want things to have a purpose. So clearly, they meant for fans and people to dig and find what was written on that journal. Um, so, and I'm glad people out there did. I'm glad CBR covered it. Rudger Creations, thank you so much for your contribution to it. Um, and yeah, it's this is neat information. I don't know. I just I'm, I'm into it, and it, it tells a lot about the character and tells a lot about the Life Foundation. Who, like I said, as a Resident Evil fan, I kind of hope they paint them in the light of like the Umbrella Corporation. And that maybe not as stupid as the Umbrella Corporation in the movies because they just don't seem to have a real master plan. And then when they revealed it six movies later, it was the dumbest thing ever. Uh, the Life Foundation has a goal. They have a plan. It involves symbiotes. It involves other things. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see how it's executed in the movie. So there you go. Those are the three things written on the journal. You guys let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you have any comments, anything you want to make, let me know. And then I also had some requests, so I'm going to be making some videos tonight uh, before I go back to bed. I have to be at work in like five hours, uh, so I'm going to try to get a little bit of sleep. But we're going to make at least one more video tonight of a request of 
comics you should read if you're a Venom fan and you want to get into comics. I'm going to put like a list of seven graphic novels in order that are currently available that you should be reading and, and what order you should read them in. Um, so I'll make that video next. So thank you guys so much for this and for all the support this week. I will see you in the future. Peace.